data from one of the first documented Tesla Cybertruck real world charging tests has been published. And I want to analyze and share those results. Does the Cybertruck really charge as fast as Tesla VP Lars Moravi claims? And how does it compare to the first generation 4680 battery pack charging speeds? Spoiler alert, it looks like the charging curve for Tesla's new batteries is quite a bit better than their first generation 4680 battery packs. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. As I covered in past videos, charging speeds for the standard range all wheel drive Model Y equipped with 4680 batteries was very disappointing. And as Brandon Flash posted on X.com back in August of 2023, quote, the base Model Y all wheel drive is the worst charging new Tesla you can buy. Tesla no longer manufactures that version of the Model Y and they've switched over to their new second generation 4680 batteries that they refer to as cyber cells for the Cybertruck. And based on what Tesla VP Lars Moravi revealed in a Top Gear Cybertruck review video, the Cybertruck should be able to charge from a 15% to 85% charge in 18 to 20 minutes. However, do note that there is a catch. The catch is this charging speed is when the Tesla Cybertruck is connected to a V4 supercharger charging at up to 350 kilowatts. And if you're not aware, there aren't very many Tesla V4 superchargers available just yet. There are a handful of them globally, and I believe there are four in the United States, but most of Tesla's superchargers are either V2 or V3, and the V2 superchargers only go up to around 150 kilowatts of charging, and the V3 up to 250 kilowatts. So really, for the next year or so, before Tesla goes ahead and installs um, quite a few more V4 superchargers, really V3 supercharging with a Cybertruck is really going to be a better test and a more accurate example of what Cybertruck owners are going to experience in real world situations today. Now, before I move into the results from a real world Tesla V3 supercharging session for the Cybertruck, I did want to make a side note here. Right now on Tesla's website, it says that the Cybertruck can charge at up to 250 kilowatts, but based on what Lars Moravi said, once again, in that Top Gear um, Cybertruck review video, we know that the Cybertruck should be able to charge at up to 350 kilowatts. So the question is, why is Tesla listing this smaller number? My guess is that Tesla is doing this because there aren't very many V4 superchargers available just yet, and a 250 kilowatt number is more realistic. In addition, it appears like there is a possibility that Tesla's V4 superchargers right now are limited to just a little bit over 250 kilowatts of charging. We'll have to see someone actually charge a Cybertruck into one of these V4 superchargers to be sure because Tesla's current vehicles, as far as I understand, excluding the Cybertruck, they're not able to receive 350 kilowatts of charging. But nonetheless, I wanna talk about a real charging test for a Cybertruck at a V3 supercharger. Now that Tesla Cybertrucks are out in the real world, we're starting to get real world examples of things like charging speeds. And for example, I recently came across the YouTube channel, Our Cyber Life, and on this channel, a video documenting the charging curve of a Tesla Cybertruck at a V3 supercharger was recently published. And in addition to the video which documented the charging of the Cybertruck, which I will link to down below and recommend you go check out this channel. Um, but in addition to that, a Google Doc was also shared with the charging curve data. First of all, you can see that the Cybertruck started out with a 14% state of charge and was charged till it hit 90%. And that's a pretty good example of a somewhat typical charging session. Because when you're charging an electric vehicle at a fast charger, the last 10 or 15% of the charging cycle takes a really long time. Because once battery cells are nearly full, there are less available spaces for the ions to find their way into the anode of the battery. And if you try to charge it too fast, those ions will plate onto the anode of that battery. So um, the BMS system of the vehicle has to slow down the charging at the end of the cycle. So generally speaking, when you're charging an electric vehicle at a fast charger, you'll charge, for example, from a 10% to 80% state of charge or a 15 to 85% state of charge, or maybe even like 20 to 70. 
um, but you don't normally charge from like 10 to 100 or 5 to 100 because that would take too much time. In addition, you can see that the charging power dropped below 200 kilowatts at somewhere around a 32% state of charge and below 100 kilowatts at around a 62% state of charge, but the vehicle was still receiving around 60 kilowatts at a 90% state of charge, which is really pretty decent. In addition, I also wanted to point out that from a 65% state of charge to around an 85% state of charge, that curve was pretty flat and really only fluctuated between 82 down to around 75 kilowatts. And that's also a good sign because it didn't just drastically drop off at that point. With that basic observation in mind, I think it's really important that we have something to compare this charging curve to um, because without a comparison, it's really hard to get really a bearing of how impressive or not impressive this is. So first of all, I want to compare this to the charging curve of the standard range all wheel drive Model Y that once again is equipped with Tesla's first generation of 4680 batteries. Now I know some of you are probably already going to the comments section and you're going to point out the fact that the standard range all wheel drive Model Y has a much smaller battery pack than the Cybertruck and that's going to affect the charging curve. And that is true, the Model Y that we're comparing here has a battery pack of around 71.6 kilowatt hours and the Cybertruck has a battery pack size of somewhere around 123 kilowatt hours. So there is quite a difference there and that does affect the charging curve. But nonetheless, I do believe this is a good comparison to look at, and I will compare this charging curve to Tesla's other vehicles as well. But as you can see, using data that Brandon Flash posted on X.com, the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y drops below 200 kilowatts almost immediately during the charging session versus the Cybertruck, which dropped below 200 kilowatts at around a 32% state of charge. So there's a drastic difference there. In addition, the Model Y charging dropped below 100 kilowatts at a little bit after 20%, whereas the Cybertruck didn't drop below 100 kilowatts until around 62%. In addition, at a 90% state of charge, the Model Y was only receiving around 40 kilowatts in this test, whereas at a 90% state of charge, the Tesla Cybertruck was still receiving around 60 kilowatts. So the Tesla Cybertruck charging curve is quite a bit better than the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, and some of that has to do with the battery size itself. Maybe there's a little bit more efficient cooling system, and I believe some of this is due to the fact that Tesla did redesign the 4680 battery itself and uh, more efficiently packaged the electrodes in that battery cell, and it made for uh, more room for those electrodes, which led to an energy density increase. But I also believe that this redesign also helped the battery to cool more efficiently as well. So um, that is encouraging and this is great news. Okay, now beyond the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y, let's talk about Tesla's other vehicles. At Ghost and Skater gathered together charging data for Tesla's vehicles from Bjorn Nieland and also from Brandon Flash and created this great charging curve graph that you can see here on the left. On the right hand side, you can see the charging curve of the Cybertruck shared by our Cyber Life that I've been talking about. And when you compare that to the charging curve of Tesla's other vehicles, once again, excluding the Model Y with 4680 batteries that we just talked about. You can see that at a 30% state of charge, the Model 3, Y, S, and X are still charging at over 200 kilowatts, with the Model S and X not dropping below 250 kilowatts until around 30%. For comparison, the Cybertruck at this point was charging at around 150 kilowatts. Beyond that, at around a 48% state of charge, the Model 3, Y, S, and X dropped below 150 kilowatts, whereas the Cybertruck dropped below 150 kilowatts a little bit earlier at around a 40% state of charge. But once again, when you look at how flat the charging curve on the Cybertruck is from 65% to 85% versus the much steeper decline for Tesla's other vehicles, you can see that this actually is impressive. Now, so far, as some of you may have noticed, I haven't mentioned charging time just yet, and I will do that very shortly. But I wanna make a quick side note about 800 volt charging versus 400 volt charging um, because the Tesla Cybertruck has an 800 volt architecture. Before the Cybertruck, all of Tesla's EVs had roughly a 400 volt architecture, which means that the bulk of the Tesla supercharging network is optimized for those vehicles. Now, traditionally, this can cause a problem when charging an 800 volt vehicle at a 400 volt charger and some kind of workaround has to be made. Tesla, instead of having a DC to DC converter that has to drop the voltage down, instead, while charging with the Cybertruck, the pack virtually splits into two 400 volt sections, which eliminates the need for a DC to DC converter, 
and this allows it to actually charge at a decent rate at a Tesla V3 supercharger. So with that being said, beyond just the charging curve, how long does it take to actually charge the Cybertruck? Well, once again, at a V4 supercharger that can go up to 350 kilowatts of charging, the Cybertruck should be able to go from a 15% to 85% state of charge in 18 to 20 minutes. But that time goes to around 45 minutes to go from a 14% state of charge to an 85% state of charge, which is once again, data from our cyber life's video on YouTube. So you can see that it more than doubles when it comes to charging the Cybertruck at a V3 supercharger versus a V4 supercharger. So once again, until there are more Tesla V4 superchargers available, right now the Cybertruck does charge quite a bit slower than the model SX, three and why, but once more V4 superchargers are available, the Cybertruck will be Tesla's fastest charging vehicle on this list. I think it's really important that I point out when you look at that data, when you charge at a 350 kilowatt charger, you wouldn't expect the time to be um, more than half that of a 250 kilowatt charger because you think you would have to like double the power to get um, half the time or less than half the time. But there's a huge benefit when you step up to an 800 volt architecture because once again, I've talked about this in past videos, but when you have an 800 volt system, you're able to get to the same kilowatt charging rate with a much lower amp rating. And this is because to calculate watts, you can multiply amps times volts. So to get a 350 kilowatt charge with a 400 volt system, you would need to be pushing around 875 amps. However, with an 800 volt system, that can drop down to 437.5 amps. So half as many amps to reach the same kilowatt power rating. Because of this, an 800 volt system is much more efficient because less heat is generated during the charging due to a lower current rating, lower amperage rating, and heat generated during charging is lost energy. In addition, on the battery side itself, lower current also creates less heat during charging, which also improves charging speeds because heat is less of an issue. So with that being said, this is why the Cybertruck will be able to charge so quickly from a 15 to 85% state of charge when connected to a V4 Tesla supercharger that really will make the most of its 800 volt architecture system. What Lars said will be realistic, but it has to be once again connected to a V4 Tesla supercharger or another charger that runs on an 800 volt architecture that can supply around 350 kilowatts. I am looking forward to charging curve data for the Cybertruck when connected to a Tesla V4 supercharger. But before we have that data, if you just look at what we have, um, charging from a 15% to 85% state of charge, meaning 70% of the battery charge being added in 18 to 20 minutes. If we stick with a 20 minute charge for ease of calculation, that's an average of around 258 kilowatts of charging power during that 20 minutes. I of course don't know how long the charging power will stay above 300 kilowatts during charging, but an average of 258 at those speeds is very impressive, especially when you compare that to the Model S, which does charge quite quickly. And for example, using data from evdatabase.org, when the Tesla Model S is charged from a 10% to 80% state of charge, if you look at how fast it does that, that charge average would be at around 140 kilowatts on average during that 70% add. So once again, with its 800 volt system, when connected to a Tesla V4 supercharger, the Cybertruck charging curve should be extremely impressive. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd also like to say that if you're watching this video and you recently took delivery of a Cybertruck and you'd be willing to answer a few questions about your ownership experience, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I can either send written questions that you can answer or we can do a video interview, a short like 20 or 30 minute interview. And I would like to share that in a future video. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.